This is the Sonic Models U glider, and uh, I really like this plane. It's probably one of my favourite uh, review planes that I've done so far, I think. But it does have a few problems, and it's mainly due to the very weak little 5 gram servos all through, and the fact that it uses snake push rods everywhere, and there's too much bend and too much friction uh, in those push rods. I've already stripped two servos, uh, the central one for the ailerons, I stripped it just setting the thing up and this is the elevator servo and you can see that one's complaining badly as well so I need to change that but I can't get access to it so I'm going to extend the, the hatch back a little bit and I am also going to get rid of these push rods with the central servo and just have individual servo uh, individual servos in the wings operating each aileron that'll give me much more options much better control i have also changed the esc for a turnergy plush 12 amp esc so that now i can stop the prop spinning and it folds back when you're gliding with the esc brake and the battery i'm using now is a 2s uh, 90 950 milliamp hour battery and that fits in really nicely. So first up I'm going to do a little bit of surgery here to lengthen the hatch. Excellent. Another problem that happens is that these push rods and push rod casings aren't supported at all from the, the boom which goes to about there so uh, they're quite flexy and initially I had that the rudder was very ineffective because it was flexing like that I really need to brace that somehow rudder servo is okay that doesn't get as much abuse as everything else so I'll leave that in there ah, it's just the yeah, as you can see it's all badly chewed up in there that's going in the bin and I'll take the wing off have a look at that central servo. I've just hot glued this little servo in so I should be able to get it out easy enough. There we go. The value of hot glue for servo mounting. Might use that for the elevator now. That's going to fit in there. Everything fits, the arm fits on it and can reuse the screws and everything for putting it into place so that's good. Much easier now that I've got more space. Done, diddly done. The push rod is sort of flexing a fair bit, but it doesn't really matter. Could brace it somehow, which would be nice. So I've put a little bit of bracing in here just to stop the push rods flexing around so much. I don't know if that'll actually help much, but I can always pull it out if it gets in the way. Just gonna hot glue that in. There you go, that'll stop it from flexing down too much. Push rod is flexing a fair bit. But the elevator's still working nicely. I think I'm going to just glue that back into place actually. There we go. Good as new. The push rods have to go because I'm going to have individual servos there. Take that right off. So I'm just going to pull the snakes out. Don't like them at all. Oh, look, the casings have gone all brittle too. That's interesting. Easy to pull out. Now I have some little uh, micro servos, 5 gram servos left over. The servo lead will conveniently go down in that little channel that the push rod was in. I'll just cut a little hole in the wing here, up near the spar I think, so that it doesn't lose too much strength. Another control horn in here, just clip this one off because I won't be able to pull that out. So, yeah, so I'll put another control horn there. Pop the servo in there.
All right, it's got some new control horns. That's pretty right. Lovely. Now, positioning the little servos, and I'll cut those tags off because they're just in the way. May have to strengthen the wing around it. We, we will see. Hopefully we don't go all the way through, but we probably will. That's better. Yes, I like that. We'll just tape over that. All right, just a little bit of hot glue. Tiny dob, just to hold it in place. Make sure I'm not sitting too high on this side. That's good. A little bit of this reinforced tape to cover it over. And I'm going to put some of this white tape over it just to hide it a bit too. That's nice. Tape over this side. And same with the other ring wing. Give it the old servo tester wiggle. Oh, no, let's just fly with that anyway, see how it goes. Now we've got the full serious setup. I have a X6R receiver. I've taken the case off, so now I can fit it underneath the wing here like this. Have the antennas hanging out the back. Make sure I don't spear some cables. Uh, no problems at all. All right, so receiver is tucked under the wing there. I can tape them down out along the wing or something like that. I have now have more space. I have a bigger battery. Uh, so now I can attach a Vario and a LiPo sensor if I want to. Probably don't need that really, but let's see how we go. We'll plug it all in. Put the battery in. I think that way goes better. ESC's in all right. Lipo sensor. Squeeze the Vario in. There we go. All right, everything's in. That is cool. Serious thermal glider set up now. So now we have individual ailerons, elevator, rudder. Make sure the throttle is working. Programmed in the ESC brake as well. Now, because I've got the LiPo sensor, which you plug into the balance lead of the battery and the Vario, um, I'll show you what I set up. I have the battery voltage on the momentary. I've got the momentary switch on the on the top left there for discus launched gliding. Zero meters, seven point three volts. Seven point three volts. So a, a quick flick of that gives me the battery voltage, total battery voltage. Zero point one meters. I have the Vario on the D switch over here in the middle. Zero I get meters. I get the altitude spoken, and on the other one I get the Vario beeps, silent tone in the middle, basically, so it's not beeping all the time. I'd have to lift the model up and down. Actually, I can do that. There you get the beeps. In the end, all of that added 15 grams, so the flying weight is now 340 grams, which is quite respectable.